Well, thanks everyone. Um, I wanted to acknowledge that there's a couple other folks from GCE at this meeting, Steve Penning, who's the co-project director, Amanda Spivak, who's my new colleague, who's been at UGA for about a year and a half, and Chris Hintz from Savannah State University, who is our representative on the diversity and inclusion committee. So we're looking at intertidal and estuarine uh, coastal systems here in Georgia, and I wanted to share a simplified version of the conceptual model that we have, that we're working on in this funding period. We're in the two years into GCE4, and we're really thinking hard about perturbations that can um, affect our domain, either through external drivers or internal processes, with the idea that the responses that we see in ecological responses are really a function of the interactions between these just uh, the disturbance or excuse me the perturbation and then the underlying biophysical template there are lots of different kinds of disturbances in our system some of them are smaller scale we've looked in and written lots of papers over the years on salt marsh dieback which is associated with drought and also uh, rack disturbance we also get larger scale phenomena such as um, hurricanes so what we were thinking about when we put this together was um, looking at how the differences in the perturbations, their frequency, intensity, size, duration, um, affect whether or not there is a disturbance. So that we define a disturbance as a perturbation that causes a response as opposed to a resilient system that's persistent. You can recover from a disturbance or you can have a state. And what we're really interested in is in synthesizing this across the entire landscape. And so we're calling this a cumulative disturbance scape. We spent a lot of time over the last year really getting our workflow down. And so I'm gonna actually go a little bit into how we're sampling this. We're using um, drone technology. We have a Matrice 200 DJI drone with a fancy camera attached to it. So it's got six bands. And we go out monthly to fly a set, um, set areas in the marsh. We've just started with one, but eventually we'll be up to three areas that we're flying monthly. Um, these areas are about um, 18 to 20 hectares. And there's a lot of data because the um, resolution of the drone is five centimeters by five centimeters. So each image here is uh, more than 70 million pixels and there's six bands. So each of those files is more than a gigabyte. So it's really kind of data intensive, um, but we process it and then we move the data up into the cloud. It's driving our IM people nuts a little bit. And then we go and we analyze that. We we're working now on um, image classification to be able to optimally pick out these disturbances. And then of course, we're also on the ground, ground truthing. Um, and we've really been focusing initially on rack disturbance. So I'm going to show you some results from that. Um, so here we have four images on the left. They're approximately monthly. We were able to fly in January and we've got a May flight on the calendar that we're still able to do as critical personnel. Um, there's a, I have a graduate student who's been working on developing a neural network and here's some of the information he puts in in order to be able to identify and track disturbances. And so here's an example of the August image. Everywhere that you see is pink is a place where we see a rack packet. And we were out in August, ground truthing on the ground with GPS, and there's uh, the places that we identified, and there's a pretty good correspondence. We're still tweaking this a little bit. But what I'm really excited about is the data. So I'm just zoomed in now just on a small portion of this area, and I wanted to point out everywhere that's purple is a place that's the perimeter of a rack packet. Um, if you look at this yellow arrows, I, I somehow think this looks like a seahorse. I don't know why. So you look at the seahorse-shaped rack packet that was there in August. You can see it in September, you can still, if you squint, see it in November. And so we're sort of seeing the legacy of this perturbation on the ground. We can also do things like get the size frequency distribution and follow how the, both the total area and the total number of packets changes through time. We can start looking at the length of the disturbance, thinking how long are those things on the landscape. So all of this will, will go into the disturbance scape that we're developing. So in terms of uh, challenges and next steps, challenges, I just wanted to say that we feel like we're really beta testers of some of this. Uh, we've had our, uh, we've had some stories with DJI support or lack thereof. And if there are other groups across the network who sort of want to get into the technical details of, of drone operation and, and processing, we'd love to. 
be involved with that. Um, we're also dealing with changing FAA regulations. There's been some discussion of potentially limiting uh, the use of drones, drones produced in China. DJI is a Chinese company. We're very concerned about that. Um, but we also have underneath here some of the things of where we're going. We're really hoping to be able eventually to scale this up to the level of satellites. And then I just wanted to end by just saying that this is just one portion of what we're doing with respect to disturbance. We also are doing field observations so that we'll be able to come up with uh, landscape level information on how some of these different plant productivity and other things are affected by, by these different uh, mosaic patchwork of disturbances. There are other kinds of disturbances beyond uh, RAC that we're looking at. Um, uh, we are going to start an experimental manipulation where we will standardize disturbances informed by the, dr the drone information, and that will probably be in a year. And then there's also a cross-site, bigger than LTR, but a lot of LTR groups are involved, um, effort to look at disturbances that Elizabeth Borer and others are leading, and we're a part of that. Thanks. Thank you, Merrill. Uh, Steve Pennings had one suggestion, maybe for some folks who aren't clear of terminology, could you explain what RAC is? Oh, I'm so sorry. So rack is the um, is the material that's brought up by the tide. You can think of the beach rack line where you see lots of dead seaweed. In our in our system, it's essentially dead spartina that's been moved around by the water. Great, thanks. And it looks like if you look at the Q and A, there's some a drone network in the making here. Excellent. Thanks, Mel. Thanks.